Hello, this video is about how to upgrade Bitcoin Core on a Raspberry Pi. So, okay, so these are the instructions. I'm actually going to demonstrate all of them, but first thing you want to do is make sure your Bitcoin daemon is stopped. You can do Bitcoin dash CLI stop. Bitcoin daemon stop, and then you'll see error timeout. Make sure Bitcoin server is running. So I know it's not running. We're going to download version 25.0. So let's do that. So I know it's not running. So as of 1st of June 2023, we are on bitcoincore.org forward slash en for English forward slash download and download Bitcoin Core. What you want to do, I'm actually on a Linux Mint laptop here, so I don't actually want to be clicking that. What I really want is, um, what I will be doing is actually copying that link address and then on the actual Raspberry Pi itself, paste in that address. I don't want to download it on my laptop and then have to transfer it onto the Pi. I'll just download it on the Pi because the Pi's got an internet connection. I'm SSH'd in for security. I'm using SSH and I've got a firewall, so it's pretty secure. Right, there we go. So it's downloaded it. The next step is, is to extract tar xzf and then we'll do Bitcoin, this time it will work. So now if we do ls again, you can see we've got a new directory there called Bitcoin-25.0. Now we need to verify this first because otherwise we could have some dodgy copy. We could have like a man in the middle attack or something which could be putting dodgy code on our Pi and we don't want that. So let's just uh, check that. Okay, so you can see download verification is optional but highly recommended. Performing the verification steps here ensures that you've not downloaded an unexpected or tampered version of Bitcoin, which may result in loss of funds. Click one of the lines below to view verification instructions for that platform. So we're going to go to the Linux verification instructions because we're on a Raspberry Pi. Click the link in the list below or above. Click the link in the list above to download the release for your plan. Oh, we've done that. Okay, download the list of cryptographic checksums. So I'm going to copy that link address. And on the Raspberry Pi, again, I'm just going to do wget and then paste that link. Okay, so it's got me the checksums. What's next? Download the list of checksums. Download the signatures attesting to the validity of the checksums. So go to copy link address and we will do wget and paste that link. So we should now have the .asc file as well. Yeah. So now we've got, you'll see we've got the sums and .asc file, which is what we need. Now, if we go back to the instructions, open terminal command line. There it's saying if you've done it to your downloads, which I haven't done, but same applies. Verify the checksum of the release file is not. Start again. Verify that the checksum of the release file is listed in the checksums file using the following command. So copy that. Just paste it in on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so that's what we wanted to see. We wanted to see that the download was okay. You must ensure that the output list is okay after the name of the release file. Okay, step six. Bitcoin releases are signed by a number of individuals, each with a unique public key. In order to recognize the validity of signatures, you must use GPG to load these public keys locally. You can find many developer keys listed here, which you can then load into your GPG key database. Okay, so... Copy that. Okay, so I think we can just get to step seven now. So it's recommended that you choose a few individuals from this list. That's the builder keys list, which we did in step six. Uh, you can import all keys at once by cloning the repo and importing the directory. Okay, let's do that then.
I've got Git installed on this Raspberry Pi. If this doesn't work for you, you'll just need to do sudo apt git install git. And now what we're going to do is do gpg import and we're going to import builder keys, all of the builder keys. And it's processed 24. Now we can see Peter Woolley. Some of you might recognize this name. So verify that the checksums file is PGP signed by a sufficient amount of keys you can trust and have imported into your keychain. So let's just do that. And good signature, good signature, good signature. So there's one, two, three, four, five. We can see there's plenty of good signatures, and I don't know how many you need really, but uh, a sufficient amount that you can trust. Let's. Um, Yeah, plenty of good signatures. Good, 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 good. There's a few warnings. I suspect that's because they've changed their keys or something. Right, the command line, the command above will output a series of signature, signatures check. Start again. The command above will output a series of signature checks for each of the public keys that signed the checksums. Each valid signature will show the following text. GPG good signature. Uh, followed by a complete line saying primary key fingerprint. Yeah, so there, primary key fingerprint. The output from the verify command may contain warnings that public key is not available. As long as you have all the public keys of signers you trust, this warning can be disregarded. There may be additional warnings that a key is not certified, etc., etc. So it's yeah, as long as you've got plenty of good ones, which we've got here, then all is well. So that means we've got the good version of the software. So the next thing to do is back to the instructions, and let's see what's next. We verified the hash, we verified the checksums. You can now extract the file and copy and paste the binaries to its location, or the binary. Um, so the file we actually want um, is the Bitcoin D file. So let's just go uh, back to the home directory. We go ls, if we do, CD Bitcoin 25 and you can see we've got a file a directory there bin and inside the bin directory we've got Bitcoin D and that is the file we want and that is the version 25 and we are going to copy that and overwrite the version 23 which I had some sound issues here, but it doesn't matter. So what I did was I went into user local bin, which is where the existing version 23 Bitcoin daemon is. And then I copied from the version 25 that I downloaded, and then I replaced the existing version 23. As you can see, I'm doing it here. Permission denied, so you just need to use sudo. And then that's good to go. So we've now got the new version. Okay, so next we're going to check we've got the new version because that's, after all, the whole point of this exercise. And one thing to remember is that you will not need to <laughs> re-download all the blocks again. 
Um, I don't know about you, but the first time I ran that on mine, my pie, it took maybe oh, four weeks, five weeks. It took forever. I've got onion turned on, but or tour, but uh, yeah. So just remember, it doesn't overwrite your blocks, so you don't lose your blocks. Okay, so how do you know that your upgrade's gone successfully? Well, if you do Bitcoin dash CLI, get network info, you'll see version 25.0.0 Satoshi. And you'll also see you've got connections in, connections out. And then if we do um, Bitcoin, check the date, so just to prove we're not cheating. And then if we do get info, um, you can see network in one out 10, verification progress 99.999, and it's all good. So 792419. So if we do get block count, 792419, which matches what we've got on blockchain.com. So a, a, a successful upgrade. Thanks for watching.